Thank you for listening to Data Science at Home Podcast with Francesco Gadaletta. You are about to get cutting edge insights from the people who are reshaping the world of technology with machine learning, data science, and artificial intelligence. It's time for Data Science at Home. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to another episode of Data Science at Home Podcast. I'm Francesco podcasting from not from Belgium anymore. <laughs> in fact, I'm podcasting from London at this time. And um, I'm in the Barclays Techstars office in Shoreditch, London. And for those who are in the neighborhood, of course, feel free to drop by. They told me that they have great beer out there. Uh, not sure about the coffee, though. <laughs> um, all right. So first thing first, I'm very sorry to my fellow followers because I've been silent for a while and I've, I've got a reason for that. In fact, I was fully focused building a company and that's what I'd like to talk about today. Uh, because it's, well, a funny story. Uh, now, of course, I'd love to share the many challenges that I'm facing in uh, in building a machine learning company. Uh, as much as I do love sharing with you the you know technical challenges of data science and artificial intelligence and in all the previous episodes that I've been producing for you. So what's this company about? Well, let's start from the name. It's called Primal.io. P-R-Y-M-L dot I-O. That's the website. The name of the company is Primal. And uh, it deals with confidential data. And to be more specific, it deals with the organizations that deal with confidential data. And so think about finance, healthcare, insurance, regulations, but also social media, automotive, energy. All these organizations that, in fact, deal with um, personal information, whatever personal information is involved or data that can uh, identify individuals uniquely from records or from digital records, well, those are the organizations that Primal want to deal with. So the big issue here is that uh, someone who owns large volumes of confidential data, you know, still needs to manipulate such data and cooperate with third parties. So... The question is, how can one build an application on top of data that are not supposed to move from the premise and giving direct access is, for example, not really an option. So you cannot give access to people who are going to work and build their, that business application. You cannot move, you cannot transfer this data anywhere. What do you do? You know, that's almost all the time you, in fact, cannot, there's nothing that you can do. Like that business application, I'm sorry, uh, is not going to be possible to, to produce one because that is too confidential, it's too private. Or it can be produced by, you know, very trustworthy individuals that probably have been locked with other means, for example, you know, contracts, legal um sometimes probably chains. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, sometimes even, you know, they give you a laptop that doesn't have a network connection or probably there is a camera filming you while you operate this data. You know, there are these very, very strict situations that that it's quite familiar whenever it comes to confidential data. Of course, one would say, dude, encryption. Right, homomorphic encryption is, or other forms of encryption, they are called encryption schemes. They might help, and in fact, they do. But we have found them to be quite slow for for industry, where you know you need uh, specific standards, uh, and and of course, uh, you don't have a lot of chances there with dealing with latency. Uh, so I've seen a lot of academic projects working pretty well with the homomorphic encryption, and also other encryption schemes or relatively small volumes of data that can be encrypted in a form that they can still be operated. But for all the other cases, it's not really feasible, unfortunately. Uh, so for those who are not familiar with homomorphic encryption, for example, or other encryption schemes, uh, it's uh, in fact a form of encryption that allows one to encrypt data and still calculate, you know, perform operations, for example, algebraic operations, on the encrypted data and get as a result encrypted results. <laughs> so, in fact, there is a very classic example that says uh, encryption of two plus encryption of two is equal to encryption of four. And so, in fact, you don't know what the operands are, you don't know what the result is, but you can still perform that operation. Now, this is possible 
from a theoretical perspective, also from a practical perspective, but there are many, many limitations. Of course, I'm not going to go into the technical details and the limitations of, you know, explanations of why this uh, uh, solution is not really feasible. So let me tell you what Primal does. So what Primal does is creating a synthetic version of the confidential data that one wants to share and expose those data instead. Right now, this would allow a data scientist, for example, to write her logistic regression or a neural network on top of this synthetic data, and at the same time would keep confidentiality of the data. You know, because the synthetic version of the data does not contain any confidential stuff. But of course, there is more because synthetic data is only the first step to creating business applications, right? After this application has been, let's say, implemented or built, well, it has to be deployed into the organization's domain. I would call it the data owner, okay? That's what Primal Core technology is also providing, a way to deploy applications that one does not necessarily trust. And where? To the confidential data of an organization. <laughs> I, mean, I might be biased in my opinion, but I found this so relevant, so fascinating, to the point that I have decided to fully focus on this particular problem for the time being. Of course, I'm not alone. We are doing this with probably one of the most talented data engineers I've ever met in my career, Mr. Dan Garrett, and with Chiara Tonini, who is an astrophysicist by background and a senior data scientist too. So, to go back to my geographic location, why am I in London? Well, it turns out that Primal has been selected to participate to the Barclays Tech Stars Accelerator London 2020. <laughs> Guys, the selection process was so tough. More than 600 companies applied this year. And after, I think, four or five rounds of selection, only 10 of them made it to the program. And so I'm so grateful this really happened to me. I mean, it gives me so much confidence. It's really great to be here in, in the most active fintech hub in the world. So what happens now? Well, Data Science at Home podcast will continue, of course. I'm planning a very interesting series of episodes in which I will be speaking about some of the machine learning aspects behind the core components of Primal, which is pure data science and machine learning. So don't worry, guys. You will still have your technical injections or technical pills in 20, 30-minute episodes. Um, for example, I would like to share with you some of the technologies that we use for the synthetic data generator, which is a very interesting component if you deal with machine learning and data science. And uh, for that, I will also bring Chiara on the show. You have heard from her in the previous episodes about data privacy in a series that we called The Dark Side of AI. There are a few episodes there, I think four, um, and, uh, and Chiara is an amazing speaker and she's also an amazing writer and she knows a thing or two about data privacy, metadata, confidentiality, and all that stuff. Other episodes will be definitely about engineering and pipelines. For example, how do you plumb your model into production? And for that, of course, I'm going to bring Dan on the show. He's such a cool guy. He's really talented. He knows his stuff. And uh, he'll be very happy to share with you what he knows and give you some tips about, you know, what happens to your model once it has been produced and someone else decides to operate that model behind an API or behind another service and integrate all that thing into production, you know, in, into the complex world of uh, corporations. Clearly, I will also cover some of the toughest business challenges that we are facing. Whenever you touch confidentiality, whenever you mention confidential data, people become very sensitive on the, on the matter. And so this is something that I really would like to speak about in the next episodes. Oh my God, that's so much going on. I can't wait to start and have you on the next show. That's it for today. Stay tuned. The best is yet to come. <laughs> You've been listening to Data Science at Home Podcast. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or Podbean to get new, fresh episodes. For more, please follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, or visit our website at datascienceathome.com.